Antonio Cestino. Twenty-four September nineteen fifty-one. I come with a boat with uh, Alifax, a, a boat called Conto Biancamano. After three days. After three days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go to work. Oh, I started uh, way back July nine. 1955. You're one of the originals then. Oh, yeah. I'm like an Indian chief. Ernesto Valente, nato a Caramanico, 1 novembre 1927. Domenico Faga, the beginning I start with the company D. Faga Egyptic, and year 1953. My name is Frank Plastina. I started in 1953 when I came in from Italy. Pierre Luigi Dolenti, and I'm here representing my father, Luigi. My full name is Edward John Greco. I'm here to represent my father, John Greco, who started Wilmar Contracting back in June of 1955. Antonio Rera. When I started, I see there was uh, work to be done, you know, under, under, especially on the rain. I see that was, that was uh, money to be made, and I was uh, happy to do and to look after the family too. Eh? The history of the concrete and drain industry is rich in people whose work ethics and skill have helped establish the foundation for our industry today. It's Frank Sinelli. I was born in Toronto. My dad's from the Brutzi area in Italy. Tony Di Monte. 1952. George Martellacci in Canada, but my real name was Giacinto Martellacci. When we landed here on uh, New Year's Day, 1955, uh, well, someone looked at Giacinto and said, what's Giacinto? That's George. And it, from that on, day on, it was George. What was your father's name, George? Mariano Martellacci. I'm Ben Chanella. I am the son of Achille Chanella. It is a great honor to be here today and to speak on behalf of my dad. We celebrate the achievements of these pioneers with a look back at their modest beginnings in an industry that continues to grow and promote development, safety, and teamwork. My full name is Frank Tucci. And you are representing? Donald Construction. Donald Construction started in 1953 by John Mannon. He operated a small little house on Glen Cairn. Those were different days where you started with an old beat-up truck and uh, probably used an old uh, used-up uh, wheelbarrow and a couple of old shovels, and that's how they got started. And we go to school for, um, for get the drain license. Oh, yeah. I gave the badge like a sheriff, you know, like... To know too many guys that time, he have this. Because everybody think go to work for a make a dollar, not to go to school. Well, you need a license for, uh, to do drain installation. So I got my license in 1953. Every year you renew the license, they give you a badge. You had to wear the badge on the belt or on the jacket. It had to be exposed like when the inspector come, that you had to have the badge on. My name is Gino Di Genova. My father was in this business back in uh, 1954 under the name of uh, DuPont Construction. My father, he got a job with John Cucci and how he got the job, he says, do you know concrete, uh, you know how to finish cement? And my father says, yeah, I can do that. I mean, he's never did that before. So when he went to uh, Rexdale there, uh, you know, the ready mix was coming in and, uh, and what he was doing, he was looking at the house next door through a window, see how this guy was doing the thing, and he says, you can do that, I can do that. So he'd go back and he'd start going like this, right? And uh, John Cucci came back, I, I remember him. He says, yeah, Dominic, that's a pretty good job. You got, you got a job. You did a nice job there. My father never did it before. I can recall um, having to bring uh, stone into basements uh, by dump trucks. Uh, at that time, dump trucks used to come in uh, uh, and dump uh, the stone as close to the window as possible, and then uh, laborers would be shoveling through the windows into the basement, and then spread into the basement. And at times, uh, because of site conditions, uh, 
those stunt trucks couldn't get close enough to the window, so they'd be 50, 60 feet away from the window and you had to wheelbarrow to the window. So it was extremely labor intense, no question about that. When you look back, what did you find most difficult? Most difficult day for me was the measurement because I was educated on Metro and I got the school in Metro and uh, I find out the yard, the inch, what is that? What is uh, that it? was a more difficult, more than the language too. See, back in the, in the uh, 60s and the 50s, Toronto was a little bit different. Um, my father was the worker, he bring back the money and uh, bring home money to feed the family. Uh, we never spent much time together, but at night, you know, because he, yes. At night, uh, you know, like on a Saturday or Sunday, or Sundays we always ate together, that type of thing. But back then it was a little bit different. Um, you had to work hard, and there wasn't much time for anything, you know. But the understanding was there between, uh, you know, uh, the father, the son, the wife, and all that. Everybody had to do their thing. They're all here to survive, work hard, and make it work. And it did. And they sort of had a respect for each other. And I think the, the, the relationship that my father had back then, uh, he maintained over the years because of that that, that respect and that loyalty, and it was, it was reciprocated. Unfortunately, the thing in those days to be proud of is how hard you worked. Got paid very little money. It was, you know, 75 cents an hour. I think it went up to about a dollar there when, uh, when uh, we first started, an hour. 65 cents an hour. 65 cents an hour. You can buy a coffee nowadays for 65 cents. Yeah. <laughs> and neither work, he do anything, day and night. Okay? He never worked. I work for 78 hours a week. It was so hard because uh, the time, uh, if you say to me, you want to work uh, on Sunday, I work. <laughs> How about your bookkeeping? Who handled that? I didn't know anything on the bank. It was only my wife looking at the bank, so I, she, she, she kept on saving the money, not me. I see, I see. So she helped you out, eh? Oh yes, yes. I was only, I was only bringing the checks, and she and she looked it after, eh? As a matter of fact, I went to the bank to cash a check. They didn't know me. They don't want to cash a check. <laughs> <laughs> from what I heard from the early days from my dad, half of them couldn't read or write. Uh, they were basically going there, and the, the people giving them the job were telling them what price they should do it for. It was basically just working for a time and material, and I remember my father telling me many times, just for material sometimes, because they worked a week for free because they didn't know how to figure it out. Mostly it was verbally. Sometimes you make a little piece of paper, but most of the time nothing, just uh, well, shaking verbally. hands that's or what? Shake just hands and that's shake it. Shake hands and that's it. Then hopefully they pay you. Later on with the association, the benefits is that the, uh, people got to know each other you knew your competitors, so that someone couldn't tell you the other guy, Joe's doing it for 25 cents when you want 50 cents. You get to know them, and it started to establish some uh, basic pricing. Especially today with uh, the language of uh, union agreements, uh, contracts, yes. issues. Um, so the association is uh, very, very important today. What type of work did you do? I've done a concrete drain, I've done a separate thing, I've done a sewer work. I, I have all the time concrete. I know what. And I want to go on a subdivision, a big job. I was small all the time because small all the time, you, know, but you get a good dollar. And how did you excavate? With, you ha with hand. <laughs> By pick hand, a, eh? Pick a shovel. Pick and shovel. <laughs> pick a shovel with barrel, everything by hand. That's what he did. No machinery. The, the separate thing we did by hand. Uh, Forming, we did the, the saw, no, no electric saw by hand, everything by hand. It was so hard at that time because no machine at that time. Then, day by day, they change. We, we bought a travel machine. Uh, we call it the, the machine to dig the sewer. Pipes were clay pipe. They had, a, they had a balanced spigot. They had to join with cement, with, with, uh, with, with a trowel and by hand. by hand. Then the next morning when you fill them up with water for inspection, there were leaks. Oh. So with dry cement, you had a 
patch him up. It was, yes. quite a, it was a quite a job. When you call the plumbing inspector, they want the those pipe to be full of water, and then you remove the water, and they want you to put the ball through. If you don't remove the cement, the ball will not go through, and you will not pass the work. The ball is a billiard ball. Ah, a billiard ball. Yeah, a billiard ball, and uh, you go to a billiard, they got always a used ball, you buy five, six um, balls at a time, you put them on the truck, and uh, on the job site, sometimes the man hauling the ball down on the uh, drain, you don't have time to catch the ball go right through inside the, the big pipe. Oh, wow. So you have to have always a spare one on the yeah, truck. A spare one. Yeah. Yeah. That was just the bell and spigot, you call it, clay pipe. Clay. Use cement joints. Yes. And you knew you had a good pipe layer when he had all his fingers burned. <laughs> they were also very honest and proud people. One time when I was a kid, as a high school kid, I was working in the summer, and in these basements I was helping them put sewers. So I, my thing was to go from A to B. And, and so the pipes would snake through there, but they would get there. He would take them all apart and put them nice and straight, and everything had to be perfect with a 45 degree bend, a 22 degree bend. And, and, and I'd go look at him and shake my head and says, but we're gonna pour concrete over this, no one will see it. And he would say, but you know that it's not done right. When I was a kid growing up, I, you know, conquering the drain was my life. It was what my dad did. And um, I would look at how things were done. Just things were done differently outside the, the GTA area. When I started working with my dad, we did a lot of work up in Barrie. And Barrie was always a big fight over that we couldn't do the drains. The plumbers had to do it. So you had to dig the trenches, wait for the plumber, wait for the plumber to get it inspected, then backfill the trenches, grade the, the area, and pour concrete. So it was really time consuming and we, had, we didn't have control of it. In Toronto, they started realizing that if the same people did the drains, did all the grading and also did the pouring of the concrete and uh, uh, they started to be known as concrete and drain, concrete and drain. But it, yes, it is uh, locally known to southwestern Ontario. Frank, safety was not what it is today. Can you remember any close calls that you encountered? I got buried in a trench once. Uh, we had three trenches, and between the trenches there was two feet or so undug. We would tunnel. You tunnel, yes. So I was in the second hole, we called it. That was the one up from the one where the connection was. And I just broke through, and I was laying on my stomach talking to the guy on the other side. He wasn't quite deep enough at the pipe felt some dirt falling, and somebody said, jump, and I couldn't jump. I was, my head was part way in this hall. So I just moved forward in the hall, and the earth came down and pinned me. I had my legs pinned for about two hours before they could dig me out. And it was an awful thing, because I was laying there thinking, if this falls in, I'm dead. The only time safety really came into the picture, really, was after we'd formed the association. And, start dealing with the union, that more common sense was coming into the industry. As far as I'm concerned, at that time it was welcome. Because of this, the ongoing efforts with the association, the employees now have got, gotten in, in their ear that safety is, is, is crucial. They've taken the courses, they've, they've taken the workshops, uh, they realize now it's, a, it's an important issue. And so as a result from way back when to today, it's, it's, it's like night and day. I was glad because I come in this country because they give me an opportunity to do, to work in, in case something is wrong in this business, I can change business too. That's a lot of opportunity for everyone. I, I'm glad from where I achieve, from where I start. I start for, for nothing. I'm happy. I'm happy. You're happy with your All the family, all together, I'm happy. I go to Italy every year before, every two, three years. Uh, the first thing to be successful, you gotta have the balls, number one. Or maybe, like me, not so educated, not realize you're sticking your head in the noose sometime, and then you gotta get out of it. And that doing so makes you successful. Uh, but I think the, the main thing to success has always been giving the customer good service, give the customer a good job, treat the men right, 
and have a happy operation. There were two basic principles, Pino, that my father instilled in me at a very early age, was to get up in the morning, work hard, and have a genuine respect for the people that work for you. Rina is uh, deserving of special mention. After John's passing, she was faced with uh, many challenges with the help of the boys, Sergio and Alfio. I can tell you that she did a one hell of a job in achieving those objectives and succeeding in each and every one of those challenges. So I have to give a lot of credit to, to Rena Manning uh, for the success of Donald Construction today. I think it was a good reward because we've been there for a long time. Um, <clears throat> thanks God we all did always the good work. We never had the problems. We lost money or payment, somebody didn't pay us, whatever. I think it was, after all of this, was a good, good, good reward. And plus all of my, uh, all of my uh, competition, we know all, we are all good friends, we respect each other. I think it's a, it's a good industry, an harmony industry. Uh, my father, like many of the other fathers, uh, started uh, just with the, the pick and shovel and a wheelbarrow and uh, they took it to the best they could and then sort of tried to pass it on to their family. Uh, now I know my father from my father's point and his family, three companies evolved from that eventually, all in the, the drain and concrete business. And it's become a, a real refined industry because of this uh, association yeah. and that we understand uh, we understand the industry better. Uh, we understand what we have to do together. It's gone a long way yeah, with, this, with this association. Once people met and they realized they're all in the same boat, um, you know, they, they stuck it out and they, they've, uh, to this day, formed a great association. A lot of our current, current things we do today all go back to what they did and their vision on how it was going. It just seemed they all had their insights on where they wanted this industry to go. They communicated, they had a great rapport amongst each other, and I'm very um, fortunate to, at a young age to see these champions of our industry, the originals, and how their basic understanding and their basic ways of, of, of this industry going are relatively still the same today. It was through their hard work, determination, and collective ideas that this unique sector of construction flourished. An industry further strengthened by the creation of the Ontario Concrete and Drain Contractors Association, whose 30-year history and primary objective is to protect, promote, and build upon those early dreams and aspirations of these, our original founding members from the 1950s the champions of our industry.